Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 16th March 2016. The first article is related to the national security architecture in the country. During the Vajpayee era, National Security Council was constituted and it has three important parts to it. The first one is a strategic policy group and below that you have National Security Advisory Board and Joint Intelligence Committee. These are the three important components. The strategic policy group, it is involved with the core of the decision making which consists of the secretaries and certain military officials related to the decision making. The NSAB Security Advisory Board, these are the intelligentsia outside the government. Joint Intelligence Committee, it will procure the data and submit it to the analysis. So these three together, they will go to the National Security Council and National Security Council will make a decision on various matters. It consists of National Security Advisor, Ministers for Defense, External Affairs, Home Finance and Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission. So this is what is the architecture which was brought in. Previously, all this national security architecture was in the hands of the Principal Secretary Prime Minister. Now, today in the Modi's government, this National Security Council hardly met. And National Security Advisory Board, which has to act as a deliberation body to give the inputs to the Security Council, is totally ignored. So again, as before 2004 situation, the entire security decisions are being concentrated in the Prime Minister's office. It is going to compromise the quality of the decision making. Further to this, after 26 by 11, the government took certain important steps to counter the terrorism. One among that is the NAT grid, the national intelligence grid, which converges all the data related to the uh, intelligence sharing and it provides for a real time inputs to the intelligence officials. Now, for the past two years, after the retirement of the existing CEO for the NAT grid, no new CEO is appointed to it. And added to that, intelligence agencies, if we observe, they suffer from lack of modernization, understaffing, necessary training and the financial support. On the other hand, Kashmir is again is becoming a boiling pot and the radicalization is increasing and the poor management of the coalition and lack of a democratic government can be cited as the reasons. So it means the security risks are increasing in the country. This article, it tried to argue what is the manifesto of BJP and what exactly the present government is doing. We don't need to argue that way. So what are the national security, what is the national security council, what are the challenges to the security which are growing and how it has to be tackled. That is what is the examination perspective for us. Next going to the Sir Creek. So the Sir Creek, India and Pakistan off the Gujarat coast, there is an issue and in this estuary, the Pakistan claims the entire history as per the 1914 agreement signed between the rulers of Sindh and the rulers of Kutch. India claims it based on the 1925 agreement which says that the boundary shall go between the middle channel. So, why this is an issue? There is a law of seas. According to this, any country, it will also have an exclusive economic zone from its boundary. And this exclusive economic zone of the Gujarat coast has huge oil and natural gas reserves and also the mineral deposits. So no country is ready to lose this particular advantage. Now what is the problem over here? And these are this Kutch where there is no governance from either side. It is becoming a land for the drug trafficking and also for the access to the terrorists into the Indian waters. So India has to be careful and it has to early resolve this issue with the Pakistan. So, the Kutch issue, if it is resolved, uh, then it provides a great advantage for the uh, maintenance or safeguarding of the Gujarat border. Now, 26 by 11 terrorists are, uh, are recently, Pakistan has given inputs to India with regard to the entry of terrorists. Uh, everything is through this particular ran, uh, ran of Kutch, through this Sir Creek. Um, so, it means it is the time India has to take a serious look at this. And added to that, the fishermen, it is also a... Um, a good fishing ground 
the fishermen from either of the country that is pakistan are arrested by indian indian fishermen are arrested by pakistan which is also a diplomatic issue always next is an opportunity for peace in syria now if you see this article now russia is withdrawing from the syria so this withdrawal as a cause you know the russia has intervened in support of the assad's forces in syria at the critical time when Assad is all about uh, to exhaust its uh, resources. So in this case, um, the opposition which is supported by the Saudi Arabia is, has slowly lost its uh, power and Assad regime has gained the strength in uh, Syria. Now why this sudden withdrawal? Now the Russia is very strategic over here. Now Russia is supposed to bend the Assad for a compromise to promote or take forward the Geneva peace talks. The Russia's interest is to create a stable Syria where the Baathist state structure has to be retained. And the second is, it also wants to maintain the close relations with its allies and make its significance in the West Asia. So in this context, the withdrawal of the forces is also timely. But however, Russia is still retaining its control over a naval base in the Mediterranean and also an air base that is Latakia air base and Tartus naval facility so as and when necessary if Russia has to intervene it has the forces at disposal in Syria and the next is related to the pharmacy now we all know that the pharma sector India is the world's pharmacy store and the generic drugs India is the factory for those so in this context, but um, medical devices, India is not in a position. What are the reasons? The first one is inverted duty structure. The manufacturing is much, co much costlier in India rather than importing the goods. Now in the present budget, the government has increased um, the cost of the duties or the improved the duties. It means that um, the imported goods will be much costlier so that it can encourage the local manufacturing. And the second is, you, we also have to create perception about the quality of our own goods. So, we have to devise the standards um, and also certification for the goods. Um. In this case, um, India has to adhere itself to the WHO standards. Um, and this brings in a quality perception and most of the hospitals can buy this. So, if we go through the local production, it automatically reduces the cost. Um. And many of the expensive treatments such as linear accelerators, they will be directly manufactured in India and it reduces their cost of production and also it decreases the cost of treatment and makes it available even at the district level which is now confined only to the tertiary hospitals. Coming to the National Court of Appeal. Now if you see, the Supreme Court, it is overburdened with the cases and 98% of the time of the Supreme Court is spent on disposing of the appeals related to the civil and criminal matters. So in this context, the pending cases has to be resolved and the Supreme Court has to more function as a federal and a constitutional court. So in this case, between the high courts and the Supreme Court, a national court of appeal is suggested. So how to constitute or whether to constitute or not, is it contravening the constitutional provisions to look into this the Supreme Court has constituted a bench. Now, in this case, what are the arguments pro and against to it? So, any national court of appeal, if it has to be constituted, there has to be a constitutional amendment with special majority plus half of the states passing that with a simple majority. And the second is, it may dilute the position of the Supreme Court. On the positive side, it increases the access to the justice. And there is a beautiful point said over here is, access to justice is proportionate to the distance. It means that um, the areas or the regions which are close to the Supreme Court, um, they are taking a better access to the Supreme Court rather than the places which are distant from. For example, most of the cases which are coming to the Supreme Court uh, are from the Delhi High Court. Uh, and the least are from the Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So as the distance is increasing from Supreme Court, um, the number of cases are decreasing and access is also decreasing. So, providing for the regional benches and national court of appeal, etc. may reduce this particular problems of the access. Next is, 
uh, in Myanmar there is a situation which is changing. Let's take a brief history of Myanmar. In 1962 there was a military coup in Myanmar. So that in uh, Mr. Nuvin, Nivin, he was the general who has replaced the Yunu and uh, Win Muang who was the president then and prime minister uh, their governments. Now in this case, now the Thien Sein, he has uh, for the former general, the military rural Argenta ruler, he has initiated slow reforms in Myanmar towards democratization. A constitution has come into force and according to this constitution there will be a president and two vice presidents. One of the vice presidents will be from military and next is elections will be conducted to the parliament. So the parliament will elect the president of the Myanmar. So in this case the most important ministries such as home, defense and border management. These will be in the hands of the Myanmar military itself. It means the military control is going to continue. Added to that in the parliament, the one-fourth of the seats will be given or kept aside for the uh, military rulers. It means the new setup, I cannot say it as completely a civilian government. It's a quasi-civilian government uh, where military still continues its hold. But however, in the recent elections, Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD, it has got 77% uh, of the seats. And finally, it has got a chance to uh, take up the uh, president, presidential, presidential post. In this case, Aung San Suu Kyi was not eligible to take up this presidential position because as per the constitution of Myanmar, if any person has a children with foreign citizenship, they are not eligible to become the president of the country. So in this case, a new prime minister is being appointed and his name is Hitin Kya. The Hitin, yeah. Now he is a close aide of the president, uh, I mean close aide of the NLD president Aung San Suu Kyi. So what are the issues that may arise? Now we have seen Sonia Gandhi and Manmohan Singh relationship. So in this case though Aung San Suu Kyi dismissed any powerful presidential position or else she is going to run the government herself through a nominee of her. Of her. In spite of this, any person who gets into the power probably tries to assert his power. It may create certain friction between Aung San Suu Kyi and Hitin Ya. Ah. And the next is, the another thing is military is still playing a, a greater role. So how this democratic process itself continues is a major question. And the third thing is, the economic distress in uh, Myanmar. And Myanmar is worst placed with regard to the human development index. It is among 149th of the 186 countries. How to keep a steady path of the economic progress and meet the expectations of the people? These are the questions before the new government in Myanmar. Now, internet governance. Now, previously ICANN, a corporation under the United States, it was the governing body for the internet. So, how can a internet which is where stakes of multiple countries are involved, it can be left to one country and also to a private corporate. Now the ICANN's role has ended and the multi-stakeholder government or multi-stakeholder control is what is being suggested and a new architecture is about to come up with regard to the internet governance. What is meant by this multi-stakeholderism and multilateralism? You all know that in a multilateralism, International Telecommunication Union is an example. One country, one vote. But we don't involve the private sector, civil society, etc. But in a multi-stakeholder arrangement, the government, civil society, private sector, all will be the partners in regulating the internet. So today, so India has supported the multi-stakeholderism with regard to the internet governance. So the multilateralism is more a governmental concept. Multi-stakeholderism government and along with the civil society private sector collectively uh, regulate the internet. So you know the Lula de Silva. So with regard to the Bolsa Familia, we studied about the Lula in the class. Now he is the most popular president for his uh, cash transfer scheme in Brazil. Now Lula he is facing certain corruption charges. 
and he is expected to come back as a minister with regard to the Miss Rosov's government in Brazil. And Brazil was going through the uh, worst crisis of economy because of the fall in commodity prices. And recently, uh, various rating agencies also gave the worst ratings for the bonds of the Brazil. So, next is, let's come back to the Indian Express newspaper today. The secrecy in budgeting should be abolished, as shown in her. One good development which can be useful for our interview is, our government is conducting the sessions for its MLEs about the budget, how the budget has to be viewed. So in this Eshwan Sinha, the, foreign for, the former for finance minister, it has given certain critical inputs about the budget. And in this one, he, one thing which he has said is, the budget has to be made an open document which has to be shared. And inputs have to be taken from all the sections by keeping it open in the public domain. Coming to the, the profit to revenue sharing, the help, hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy. So with regard to the help, previously it was the profit sharing model. Now we have shifted to the revenue sharing model. It means previously uh, the explorer he has to certify the gas uh, which he has explored from the area. And after the cost recovery, it means whatever the cost he spent, uh, the remaining money the government and uh, the private people will be shared. So because of this, there is always a controversy how much is the cost incurred. So now, the government is going to give the license to the people, whoever is going to offer it the ex extra, that is revenue, excess revenue. It means um, whoever gives a greater share of the total revenue generated rather than the profit, um, they will be offered for. And the next is there is a unified license. It means, previously the license was for only one particular element that is gas. Now the gas, coal, bed, methane, everything, the shale, everything will be through one license. So the third thing is open acreage policy. So what is meant by this open acreage policy? Now I can go and search the particular area and to the extent possible I can take that particular area or else I can intimate it to the government and take it for exploration. Previously government identified the blocks and it allocated to the agencies. Now it is not that. You can go and select this particular area for exploration and you can submit an application to the government and government will give that particular area for you. So these are the developments which have come up. With regard to the Iran's missile test policy, now the Iran nuclear deal already IAEA uh, supported or else certified that uh, Iran is adhering to all its uh, commitments under the nuclear policy. So recently Iran has tested a missile. So it means does it come under the violation of the nuclear deal? So missile, the language said is um, Iran is hope to uh, not to develop the missiles. There is no commitment from the Iran not to develop the missiles. And also uh, the missiles are fired by the revolutionary guards, Iranian revolutionary guards. It shows that uh, the President Rohani has no control over the Iranian revolutionary guards uh, which can derail the peace process. And finally, farmers needs a new deal. It is the best article for today. Now, the farmer suicides are increasing. And the agrarian distress and drought is high on the rural side. So the only way out for this solution is rising the farm income. So how it has to be? So the farmer suicides are majorly due to the failure in crops. So ensuring a crop income are providing for something called as a solution whenever there is a crop failure. This will help in the situation. So first is generally crop diversification can help. And improvement in the irrigation facilities, alternative sources of income such as farm, dairy, etc. And consolidation of the land holdings or else we can improvise this particular um, the tenant relationship where the farmer can take a wider area for cultivation. And insurance to the crop, making the agricultural markets more competitive and removing the intermediaries. These are the various steps which are suggested. Because of the paucity of time, I am unable to cover this article in detail. So, but however, these are the highlighted points. Please go through this article once on the internet. You don't need to buy the newspaper for that. 
and next is already internet governance i have discussed to you we went through the multi stakeholder model not the multilateral model remember this point now let's come to the discussion of yesterday's issue the aadhar the rule which has to guide the aadhar is um, minimum use and maximum safeguards so it means what you need to talk about over here the right to privacy the aadhar has to protect and you can talk about the supreme court judgment and then aadhar bill the provisions of the aadhar bill where aadhar bill do not exclude uid from collecting more information or biometric data other than the iris scan photograph and the fingerprint and the next is the authenticated information the uid can store so how many days it can store is also not clearly stated and the third thing is if this uid if there are no controls and under the national security the government can access the information which is with the uid so because of this it may also provide challenges to the data protection so in this context uid is it leading to mass surveillance is the question so added to that the cyber security challenges are still prevailing so these points if you cover that is more than sufficient so thank you very much all the best